here's some exciting stuff. The Honeywell breakup is rapidly approaching, and I think it's going to be a big win for you, shareholders. Remember last year, this gigantic industrial conglomerate announced that it would spin off its transportation business, think fuel-efficient turbochargers. That's called Garrett. And they're spinning off their total home connectivity business. That's called Residio. That will leave the remaining Honeywell as a huge aerospace and defense business with sidelines and special materials and industrial productivity. Regular viewers know I tend to adore corporate breakups because they're a great way to unlock value. Money managers will pay more for simple, straightforward stocks that are easy to understand. That's what Honeywell's giving you. Plus, it helps that the company's effectively separating itself from two of its end markets that cur just currently have fallen out of favor with the Wall Street fashion show, housing and autos. I think that's one reason why this stock has made a nice comeback over the past couple of months. Although it doesn't hurt that the least last quarter, exceptionally strong. Management raised their full-year guidance by a hefty amount. So let's check in with Darius Adamczyk. Now, Darius is the relatively new CEO of Honeywell, only because you might, of course, remember Dave Cody from the show many times. And we're going to get a better read on the company, how it's doing in the start of the breakup. So, Mr. Adamczyk, welcome to Mad Money. Great to see you, yeah, sir. Glad Have to see you, Darius. Glad to be here. Well, it's very exciting to have you. We've been huge champions, as you know, of the stock for, uh, for a double. And I want people to understand, over the next two quarters, we're going to get a brand new, so to speak, Honeywell. Why you need to do it, because we always were enamored of the company that Dave had, and why you think this can do better. Well, one of the things that I always think that a new CEO should do, or any CEO should do periodically, is review the portfolio. And I did it once when I was COO, and then I did it again so when I became CEO. And although we did have some um, activist interest, it really wasn't a stimulus because that's some of the analysis I was going to do regardless. And then I defined what is defines a Honeywell business. And then there are a couple of businesses that frankly were terrific businesses, mm -hmm. Garrett and Residio, but frankly they didn't fit the Honeywell profile. And sort of the, the kind of test all that end all litmus test for me is, am I as a Honeywell CEO likely to put money, capital to work in these two businesses? And frankly, there are some other businesses that would be ahead of it, which obviously raise them to the top of maybe they don't belong in a portfolio. But they're terrific franchises that have performed extra, exceptionally well for it. Well, I'm glad you bring that up because what we've discovered in these breakups is it's not necessarily what you think is going to do well that ends up doing well. I love what we're calling Remain Co. right now because of aerospace, because of defense, non-residential oil and gas, between you're the leader in that, industrial productivity. Amazon is a giant client. But then I look at how Advancix did, which is a cats and dogs. That's what we thought. Spinoff. And it's been a killer. Right. So we ne shouldn't necessarily dump Garrett or Residia. No, they're terrific businesses. If you think about Garrett, and this is a business that I have a long-term view because of the wins that they've had in a lot of different platforms, the kind of performance they've had in the past. And frankly, it's one of those businesses that I don't worry about. When they commit to a quarter, when they commit to a number, they deliver like clockwork. So it's a terrific franchise. It just doesn't happen to fit our portfolio. Residio, same story. Huge installed base. It's present in so many, in millions upon millions of homes. Have a great strategy around a connected home, a one-stop shop solution, and a great distribution, low voltage distribution called ADI to go along with it. Terrific franchise. No, I, I think that they can expand and do great stuff. Now I am. Uh, it really kind of in awe of what the new company is going to be look like because you have ten billion dollars of cash to deploy in 2018. I mean, the cash available here, more aggressive capital deployment soon, accelerated cash flow conversion for those who are just regular uh, shareholders of Honeywell. What are all those things translating to? Well, obviously we have a lot, many more tailwinds behind us. I mean, we've picked up our organic growth, we're driving better cash conversion, continued the terrific margin expansion record that Dave established right. that's continuing. And now we have about $10 billion plus of firepower on the balance sheet to deploy to stock buybacks, to dividends, and to M&A. We're actively participating in a lot of different things that are happening. And now we have four exciting sectors to invest for M&A. And you know, one of my goals in the two spins was also to simplify the company. We've gone from eight end markets to six and all of them are extremely appealing from an investment perspective. One of the things that you've done is continue Dave Cody's completely open way, transparent way. You head on talk about the tariff issue and what it would mean for Honeywell. Yeah, so one of the things that we pride ourselves on is that we have very much a local for local strategy. So most of our manufacturing innovation, for example, for China, takes place in China. 
Same thing in the U.S. So actually, the tariffs are not a big mover for us because we are very much local for local. Obviously, you know, we plan for the worst and hope for the best. I remain optimistic that things will get resolved because I believe the world's number one and number two economy will come together and arrive in agreement. But where it will impact us, we have plans in place around supply chain, around pricing, around movement of some of our goods. All those things are already in place and we're ready. But all in all, it, the impact for us is relatively modest. All right. Uh, one last issue that I want to go over is it was a great surprise to some people. I don't know. I know Dave Cody lived next door and all sorts of exciting things going on. We all know that you're the king of aerospace because you're uh, really agnostic. Uh, we know you have great defense business. This uh, oil and gas, petroleum, chemicals is good. But suddenly people are excited about your right. Amazon business. So right. why don't you just give me a second yeah. on that? Yeah, so it's, uh, it relates to our warehouse automation business. It's a franchise that we acquired a business called Intelligrated. It's been just a terrific growth business. I mean, when you think about 50, 100 percent booking rate increases, you know, top line growth of 20 percent plus. I mean, that's it gets very, very exciting. And uh, obviously, uh, Amazon and all, we have other exciting customers. And I think this is a nice pickup for us because it's coming at the right time. Warehouse automation is huge, driven by e-commerce. It's a trend that I believe is going to continue, not just in North America, but throughout the world. And uh, it was a great pickup for well, us. There's, is, I'm listening to you. Is that how you could go from what people thought would be 3% organic growth to right. double that? Is it that kind of acceleration? Well, I think, you know, Jim, you, you're starting to see it. You know, we've yeah. gone from kind of a zero to one growth. We did 4% last year. We did 5% in Q1, 6% in Q2. And I continue to be very bullish on our growth. And as you know, that's been my number one priority for the business is, how do we increase the enhance the organic growth rate? That well, I, was the I, one thing I wanted to do, and it's starting to come through. And you're doing. I've got to hand it to you. I remember when Dave Cody said goodbye, and he said, "It's Darius's airplane." And holy cow, he was literal, and you took him literally, and the value is coming out. Congratulations, to what you're doing, Darius, for all your shareholders. That's Darius Demchek. He's the chairman and CEO of Honeywell. Wow, the stock was great today. It's going to be great for all of 2018, and I believe 2019 too. Maybe you keep the pieces. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.